have a really special series. They're quick little interviews that we're doing with our DevReach speakers. DevReach, as you may have seen during the intro video, is a conference that we are throwing. It's back in person and in Bulgaria this fall. So grab some tickets if you haven't yet, if you can, if you can make it, if you're in the area. Um, but today with me for our very first speaker interview, I have the amazing Miriam. Is it Jessie? Did I? Yes, it is. Did I make yes, that too yes. fancy? <laughs> French, you can't you just fancy it up. It's fine. <laughs> How are you doing? Is it morning for you or evening? Yes. Um, it's beautiful, sunny afternoon. I'm afternoon. currently in Portugal and it's lovely. Awesome. I'm in I'm in the States and it's morning for me, and I am just so excited to be kicking off this series with you. I feel like we're I've told you before, like kindred spirits. So welcome. Uh I want to jump right into the questions and I was pulling up uh, your feedback, but I wanted to know, can you let us know a little bit about how you got started in tech or development in general? So I love this question because it's a bit of a joke. Every time I go to a dev conference, I get told, you know, you could really pass for at least junior level developer. And I'm like, I don't code. I do not code. <laughs> so we, we have to talk about this because for a very long time, I felt like the odd one out, but mm. it's very important for me to go attend dev conferences because I'm a technical marketer. So mm. anything that I need to get done, it doesn't get done by legal. It doesn't get done by the business end. Mm. It gets done by devs and engineers. So here I am. And it got started because I was fed up with people assuming I didn't know how to read code or debug it. Mm. I can. Some people can sing. It doesn't mean that they're professional singers, you know? <laughs> I can read code. <laughs> so, so you, uh, you, but how did, how did tech even get introduced? Like, how did you even find the world of like technology? My first website at nine years old. So oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I'm in my 30s. So I've seen some things on the internet. Okay. I have survived some stuff. And I used to make little websites. And obviously, I was unhappy that people couldn't find my websites because as a nine year old, of course, I had the best website. Of course, everybody had to know about it. I was telling adults about websites and they're like, what's the internet? And that's how old I am. Yeah. And but I feel like I still answer that question. So. <laughs> <laughs> I realized that this was a job. Imagine like your hobby turning mm. into a job. And I had a landlord call one of my job, one of my jobs to go, I understand she's employed with you, but is this a real job? Like what she's describing, is that an actual job that people do? So <laughs> it, happened, it happens naturally when you're having fun, right? Like some folks, they it decide does. to do this, but <laughs> here I am. So you work at pragum.co, A, is it pragum or is it? PRAGM or some other No, it's it's Pragma and I wanted the company name to be super short, memorable mm -hmm. and reflect mm -hmm. what I am despite the whole like ADHD um, disco ball. Um <laughs> it's that I'm very pragmatic in business. Mm -hmm. Can it be done? How much? Do we actually mm -hmm. have the resources for it? So we decided to cut pragmatic in two and nobody knows what it means. People are very confused. Worst decision ever and I'm sticking by it. <laughs> So you started, how long ago did you start? Um, the company itself, I think seven or eight years ago already. Time flies mm. by when you're, you know, making money being your own boss. It's kind of sweet. It life. honestly sounds insanely daunting. Like It is, but I have the privilege <laughs> of saying, thank you, but no. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, that is amazing. Can you tell us a little bit about your role as an SEO trainer and what does that involve on the day to day? Yes. So um, I'm what you would call a technical SEO. So I do know other bits about SEO. I handle them quite well, but usually I'm the person that developers go to, engineers go to going, hey, we keep being bothered about search engines. We keep being told that there's like some performance metric out there that we don't care about and we suddenly have to. So can you explain it to us in a way that will make us care on top mm -hmm. of educating us? So that's the bit where I come in. So if you mm -hmm. want, 
the guru if you want the famous person you don't come to me if you want to actually get stuff done you may enjoy working with me hence the the pragmatic that go yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with i know your talk i'm actually gonna put the banner back up um that has your talk title in it uh for this year for this fall i'm so excited so yes bandage image blow achieving peak performance with image performance budgets so around image optimization how did you get started with image optimization performance and even seo like where did that passion stem from before we get even into this, I'm so yeah. excited to be talking about this. Thank you for accepting this topic. I really care about it. I have been talking people's ears off about this and <laughs> I'm excited, okay? I am. So I'm, I'm a bit of an image optimization nerd and mm -hmm. it comes from the fact that the web keeps growing. It keeps getting heavier. We think that with technology, we're getting better, faster, meaner, sleeker. No, no, it's just like an over overstuffed, overloaded, carry-on baggage you're desperately trying to fit in that low-cost airline <laughs> bin above your head. It's a disaster. So, yeah. You paint such vivid life. pictures. It's, I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, I, I got into this, and very quickly, um, I was approached by a company that is specialized in image compression and optimization. Mm -hmm. So, of course, they were excited to have me. And I got to nerd my heart out as a consultant. And then more and more news websites, e-commerce websites were like, we have problems. I'm like, and with me, you will figure out what the problem is. And then we'll talk about the solution. Mm -hmm. So that's where the whole performance budget comes in, right? Mm -hmm. You keep telling people images are huge. They're super heavy. And then what happens? Oh, yeah, we thought the designer would handle it. Oh, we thought the marketing people would handle it. And then they all say, we thought the devs would handle it and i'm like and this is how we end with either a giant picture on everything mm -hmm. even the thumbnail previews are huge or mm -hmm. it's so over compressed to heck that you're like i can see the pixels but i don't know what i'm looking at what are, yeah what is this oh. yeah <laughs> I that I love that um that psychology term I'm it's blank it's missing but uh, like from my brain but it's where essentially there's so many people like stand stand people standing by that like the obligation effect. yeah like it the obligation like jumps and it spreads to everyone so therefore it's no one's job and it's kind of like that with the, oh well yeah later. and and I don't know why we do this to ourselves, but when we go on like stock photo websites, we always download the largest one. Like there are options, but we consciously choose not to care because we'll care later, you know, and later <laughs> never happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's a little bit of like where you got started with image optimization and mm -hmm. where that passion stems from. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk to on this point about how you got started with it or like if, if I were, if I were to um, really give a different point of view, because I know a lot of people mm. get scared when they get into development, going, "I have to be the best," and then mm. you like spend so many sleepless nights until like five a.m. trying to figure something out and like breaking your head over stuff, and mm. you're like, "Okay, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough." Chill. If you have someone like me talking at this conference and I'm not even a developer, we all have space at the table. Okay. So getting that confidence and understanding that there's mm. some bits of technical knowledge that not everyone has, but you do, and you get to communicate them to others. That's awesome. So that's how I got into it. I got super nerdy and went down rabbit holes going, this is not working for me. Why is this so broken? Like, mm -hmm. why is this broken? I'm tired of people telling me it works on their machine. I am so fed up with this. And and when I was <laughs> in my 20s, whenever I would ask someone, can you install like this widget thing for marketing? And they were like, yeah. sure, it will cost 10K and take four weeks. And I was like, no, I can actually like three lines of code. Here is the API. Let's go. And then all of a sudden people would look at me and go, oh, okay. You actually do know what you're asking for. Okay, we, we we can get started. So it'll that's take how three I got weeks. Into it. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's gonna take three weeks. Okay, I can do this in fourteen minutes tops. Do you want me to like ask you to move aside, take over your computer, and you have me doing it and shaming you, or you know? Uh, 
Uh, Thindle saying, not sure if it's accurate, but I keep hearing 30 MB of JavaScript for Facebook. But to be honest, it did work on my machine. <laughs> oh my God. You want to torture me, right? You just want to torture me. And and let me guess, you also have like some marketing pixels that that are just out of date and you keep piling them on too. And that's fine because it works on your machine. No, because people do this for images. They do this for any old JavaScript that they don't even know what it does. Like, it's a general thing, okay? I just decided to pick images because I had to pick one battle. Mm -hmm. But yes, mm -hmm. it's a thing. <laughs> so spoilers ahead. What is one thing that developers can do better or be more conscious of with their images um, for that line between high quality and like a speedy page loan? Like, because obviously there's a balance, right? It's easy. It's so easy. Okay. Create an image performance budget. So, Ooh, so I think you say budget and everyone scurries. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the point. That's the point. Because like, imagine that you can go shopping online for whatever you want and there's never any bill and you're fine. This is what we do to images. So mm. an image performance budget for me, it's a set of limits that we all agree on. Like they're imposed mm. on and there's metrics that come with it. So we mm. know if we do this, this is going to affect the performance of the site. So mm. this is a great framework because you get to talk performance with stakeholders with people who don't necessarily understand the problem or don't want to because there's mm -hmm. no upside to them understanding it so all of a sudden that budget it's a heavy thing I know in the U.S. currently you know all about budgets and how hard <laughs> it is to negotiate them right so you know that budgets do work so now if we get into um, actionable stuff mm -hmm. if you are here listening to us for a quick payoff from like watching both of us I've got you covered. Okay. <laughs> so always remember, no, because for me personally, like you show up to these events and you're watching people and you're like, cool, what am I going to learn from this? Like, I mean, I like them. They're kind of funny, but what am I going to learn? So there's stuff you can learn. Number one, always remember that the right format for an image, it's found somewhere, you know, like in between the desired visual results and the functional requirements. So the people that come onto a photography website, they clearly don't have the same expectations as sh someone shopping on their mobile phone at midnight on the couch on wish.com, okay? Mm. Two different things to consider. Right. And one of the things that, like, it's a very quick and easy thing that nobody talks about. What? If you're going to have retina-friendly images, like mm. double pixel density, that's mm -hmm. pretty dense, just add an at 2x at the end of the file name. So that way you actually know, hey, wienerdog.jpg, wienerdog at 2x, not jpeg. You know exactly what you're working with. Mm. It's simple, but it makes a huge difference. And don't do it. <laughs> and last but not least, images cause a lot of layout shifts. So we never talk about this, but it causes a lot of disturbances. And if you don't include um, image dimen dimensions, that will cause layout shifts because modern browsers, they, you know, like set the default image aspect ratio based on those attributes. So mm -hmm. we used to care about it and then we stopped caring about it and now we <laughs> care about it again. <laughs> uh -huh. It's it's kind of funny how it goes that way though. It always does. It swings back and forth. But I I am so excited to learn from you, to see your talk, and to get to hang out with you. Before we wrap, I it might be apparent to viewers, but both of uh, Miriam and myself struggle with uh, ADHD, and so I wanted to bring. I know it's a little bit different of a topic, but I always like to bring up mental health when I have a sex. So do you have any advice for other? Um, members of the tech community who maybe struggle with ADD or ADHD? Is there anything that's helped you in the past? Oh, so many. Okay, so number one, I've been told because we, we did get to talk about this um, offline, you and I, mm. I did take a huge risk and I had a conference that was made public on YouTube. Usually the conference does not make these talks public, but this one is ADHD plus SEO, so the job that I do and mm. how I work 
how it works within my brain, what you can do to help me, what I do to help myself, etc. And I had so many people telling me if I could send this to my boss so they would understand how I work, it would be awesome. So just know you can search my name plus ADHD. You will find the talk on YouTube. Maybe you need to send it to your mom, your grandma, your uncle who doesn't believe that, you know, with the power of a list, you can't fix everything. Yeah, yeah. Go right ahead. Another <laughs> element is I would recommend a planner it's called um papel planner and i'm not here to promote the stuff but i How have do you to spell say, it um p-a-p-e-l and the Ooh. reason why i recommend it is that it was created by a psychiatrist in europe that has adhd mm. and found my website and was like i read your homepage," and i was like this person has adhd I was like, normally I get compliments saying, oh, it's so dynamic and lively. And, and you actually read through me. Okay. So um, last but not least, please stop hating yourself. There are some days where I get asked by other people, how can I save the day? Like, it's not happening for me. I'm like, it's not happening. It, acknowledge it's not happening. Okay. You will have hyper focus later to get it done. You just <laughs> can't tell when, but it will happen. Okay. Have mm. faith. Yes, I often tell people to like stop chase chasing like the the mythical hyper focus. Like, it just because it doesn't happen every day and every day is not perfect uh, doesn't mean right. You know. Wait, <laughs> wait, you you brought on another tip though. Like, yeah, I have found repetitive. Um, if you go on Spotify and look for ADHD hyper focus, mm -hmm. find yourself a playlist that turns it on. Like, there are some magical playlists, not for everyone. Are you okay? talking about the ones that like go back and forth, like the the weird audio? Have you seen those? I don't remember what it's like, eight D or no. something. No, no. Uh, mine is actually it just sounds like um the the vibe is more like uh Blade the movie from the nineties, the yeah. rave scene, like for mm -hmm. three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. <laughs> I'll try the fancy schmancy ones then. It's good. It's good. I, I don't know. They say there's science behind it. I honestly just like uh, feeling like I'm being hypnotized. So it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I went for the 90s uh, blood rave vibe, but yeah, whatever works. <laughs> oh, Miriam, thank you so much for coming on to do this interview and for being one of our amazing speakers this year. I cannot wait to see your session and to hang out with you, but I just think you are a treasure. So thank you for all that you do for our community. And I think if you have any other last minute words before we wrap. I'm just so excited about this. Seriously, I'm excited. <laughs> Hi Thindle. Hey Thindle, we hope we hope you can come and see us in Bulgaria. <laughs> Thanks for all your fun comments. We have more interviews this week. I think we've got like one speaker interview a day this week. I like let the speakers pick and they were all just like this week. <laughs> I was like, that's good. That's good. So we got a lot coming up, a lot of great content. So tune in. <laughs> Bye everybody. <laughs> Bye.